My guest in Animatayan today is Miguel Connor, and together we are spinning a yarn. Miguel, um, great to have you here. You're host of the wonderful uh, podcast, Ian by Gnostic Radio, author, speaker. Welcome. Thank you for having me on. Appreciate it. <laughs> so, Miguel, what has been your favorite story as a child? Oh, that was so hard when you reached out to me. My mind, I was going through a childhood recollection, and it was a wonderful journey from uh, the Little Prince to the Hardy Boys to the Hobbit, uh, uh, C.S. Lewis. It was all these wonderful, uh, Don Quixote, growing up in Mexico, Don Quixote was almost like scripture for the Hispanic people. It was entertaining, but it's something that was a foundation for that psyche. But I have to say the one that came to me, and this is before my teenage years, before I really got into the really, hep, you might say, heavier stuff like uh, Lord of the Rings or uh, Grapes of Wrath or Dante's Inferno, or sci-fi, <laughs> all that good stuff. But What struck out to me was uh, T.H. White's The Once and Future King. And if your uh, listeners uh, don't know about him, T.H. White did a uh, huge, it was actually started out as four novels based on King Arthur. He based it on Mallory's La Morte d'Arthur. And uh, it, obviously he took a lot of liberties. Uh, there's a lot of anachronisms. He did things like have Arthur meet Robin Hood and so forth, but it's still based. He, uh, what else did he do? He he had Arthur be uh, an Anglo-Norman instead of a Briton in the med medieval ages, but it's still very much, you might say, loyal to the Arthurian legends and ties it all in together. But it was an incredible read in that liminal space between a kid as a, and a teenager I couldn't put it down and I was just uh, I took this fantastic journey because I don't know how things have changed but King Arthur was a very powerful archetypal image when I was a kid he was the the great king the great fallen hero all that and there was so much going on that you could read and watch movies but uh, the once in future king sort of gave us this huge uh, ecosystem or holistic landscape of King Arthur. And it was uh, highly recommended. And it's fun. It's very dark. It's philosophical. Um, I think uh, the theme that always got to me, and uh, you see it a lot, especially when you watch uh, um, Camelot, the old movie, and you had, I think, Richard Harris in it, I'm not, or maybe it was Peter O'Toole, whatever it was, it was that it's been a play. Yeah, Richard Harris was in the play, I know that for sure. But it's the idea of might for right. And um, that's one of the struggles that King Arthur goes through the entire book. He, um, at first, he's like, might is right, right? Uh, we're an empire. Where the big guys with the swords, uh, we we call the shots. But uh, King Arthur is saying no. It should be might for right. It should be there should be justice and rules and empathy for everybody and no hierarchy. Just uh, a nice little system. But as we all know from the story, it didn't work out. He thought I'm Lancelot was <laughs> Lancelot <laughs> was the perfect. I don't know machine. He was almost saying more. He was a Uh, a being of justice, uh, the greatest warrior around. He was the, you might say, uh, yeah, Arthur's great experiment, and he failed. And King Arthur wonders, well, maybe it's there can be no might for right because humans are complex. Uh, Lancelot is supposed to be the greatest paladin, most honorable person in the world, but as a complex human being, he falls for the wrong woman he could have fallen for and everything. The entire experiment of Camelot falls apart. And even though, and to this day, humanity is still trying to find this Camelot, uh, still trying to find Avalon, still wondering is might for right. And uh, I would say, no, we can look at, obviously T.H. White was probably talking about the British Empire and its uh, collapse or 
And we can talk about the American empire is might for right. Uh, I would say no. So sorry, I went on a tangent, but it was just, it's no, an exciting read. That, that, that's what I wanted, uh, uh, what I aimed for within this series. Uh, because when you tell it like that, I see how um, the formative years of Arthur and um, these, these topics have, um, had an impact on on your worldview on your interests about hierarchy and empires and I mean, yeah, who are our about rulers it, and forget about it and as a child but it stays with you and you come back to it and you wonder there yeah. has to be other solutions and of course arthur and merlin are going back and forth about life and how to deal with life and other characters are there uh I remember what struck me deeply was Galahad, who was truly the pure person. He was almost angelic. And after the grail, he just basically dies because uh, he can't be in this world because he's just too good for this world. And again, we go through that uh, that idea of this fallen world, who has the power, hierarchy, all that, these great struggles that are timeless and eternal, whether it's in with the Gnostics or beyond. Yeah. Yeah. So um, have you found your grail to heal the wasteland? <laughs> what a great metaphor. I think uh, the grail is, as many have said, uh, I'm not saying anything new. The grail is within you. I think Arthur is that idea of going inside and contemplating who you are and what the land is and what the kingdom is and what it means and to continue continue this journey because even at the end of um, the once in future king spoiler alert uh it doesn't actually show arthur dying like we see in the stories and his body being taken to avalon he simply goes to his last battle it's like he just goes to fight and that's it the story ends so we kind of don't know but as the title tells us he he will come back he can come back and this is sort of an eternal motif uh, for people so I think uh, that's I think that's the story go inward and see all the possibilities that you can find and see all the mistakes you're going to make and uh, look at the ancient stories uh, look at the land uh, and see you'll find the answers you'll find the answer they are timeless I love in um, what's uh, the movie Excalibur yeah wonderful one of my favorite, yeah yeah one of my favorite movies there's that scene where he drinks from the grail and he realizes the king is the land. The land is the king. He gets that gnosis because he realizes like the Hermeticists or even the Gnostics, it, everything is connected and he had lost his connection with the land. So this alchemy of the Holy Grail and the quest revives him. And when he finds himself again, strong with power, the land itself revives. And to me, that's one of the great lessons how we humans are connected to the land and our well-being is connected to the land's well-being and vice versa. There is no one without the other. As, as the Hermeticist said, uh, everything is connected and everything takes care of each other and everything is embedded. Yeah, yeah. And and serves the land and the, the grail, not, not uh, enacts power over it, but is there to serve it. That's... Yeah, and there are some... Uh, stark horrible things in uh the once in future king that you don't hear about it like in this story when uh mordred is born he simply i think he hears about it that he's had a, a child from a incestuous relationship with his half-sister and suddenly he hears a prophecy and the prophecy says his son will be the doom of the king and arthur just makes the typical ruler mistake uh he gets all the children that were all the babies that were born in that area. He puts them on a boat and then he sinks the boat. So he, the prophecy will not come true. And again, we think of Herod. We think of um, who's the, the great Greek tragedy. Uh, what was the name of it? The guy who sleeps with his mother. Um, yeah. <laughs> exactly. yeah. The audience is screaming at us. Is screaming at us. Yeah. Freud yeah. made a, a, a disease about him. Hopefully, yes. but we see again this sort of king who uh, who gets the prophecy and does horrible things to do it. And in the book, 
uh and then in the book obviously he is tormented for decades because of this horrendous thing of killing babies and mordred uses that guilt against him and of course things begin to uh begin to unravel mm -hmm. yeah yeah um that's a, um a recurring topic in especially in norse and, and celtic myths the the corruption of the king i mean uh beowulf when he gets to power, it's his downfall, and and so on. That's interesting. That uh, it's where where these images come from, um, um, because you you mentioned the British Empire uh, and the uh, the crumbling of of empires. I, it's it's interesting. It's like a. An image on on an archetype that that maybe stems from these parts of the world. Yeah, I think we can't get around it. I keep thinking. Uh, I know there were the Gnostics call themselves the generation without a king. They were they were anarchists, but can we really get around the archetype of the king? Um, some say the some unions say no. The king is uh, not an archetype. It's uh, it's the ego. So therefore, we can do something about him, but. Then again, we can't exist with our ego. There has to be somebody driving the ship. Uh, so, I, and of course, I struggle with these ideas. I want to live, uh, as I tell people, I want to live something like Tolkien when he very interested in anarchism. And well, what is anarchy? Well, the Shire. There was no king in the Shire. That's my society. But is it true that can happen? I mean, we forget in Lord of the Rings, the Shire did get sacked by the orcs. So, <laughs> yeah. And then uh, some gets mayored, <laughs> but it, he's not king. Yeah, that's that's right. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a it's a struggle we all have with these images and these powers. And can we overcome fate? Uh, can we overcome the archetypes, uh, human nature, and all that? So, to me, the Once in Future King is a, a great book to uh, really really get into. And obviously, in the play Camelot, there's that song to reach the impossible dream and all most people know this song and so there's that idea Is, of isn't Arthur. it from from um don quixote from the, the oh it is uh, don quixote i'm getting the wrong one sorry i was reading cervantes too the yeah, other day yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah but uh, don quixote yeah he's delusional man Dude. man of la mancha yeah man of la mancha yes yeah, so that's a sofia loren was in it too uh, yeah wonderful. So you're right. I, I'm getting the songs confused. I need to get back and listen to these uh, musicals again. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, Miguel, what a great um, expedition into the imaginal and uh, our constant struggle with our ego and how we experience ourselves in the world about how uh, we can maybe define our kingdom and how we preserve it, how we heal it, and how we don't. Yeah. Oh, and I just remember it was Oedipus. That's <sighs> uh, you want to talk about the primordial story of the king and fate, and can we overcome fate? And yeah. Oedipus would be the great story, I think. Yes, I think there's, yeah, totally. there's stories that are about the soul's high adventure, Alice in Wonderland, Wizard of Oz the Plato, the Gnostics, but I think these stories are about how the ego can address the world and if the ego can really, as a choice, to deal with reality. So, uh, yeah, but it's all, like you said, connected with the imaginal, the world of archetypes. And I don't think Oedipus sings the impossible dream, but that would be a fun play, right? We could just... <laughs> all these, all oh, these he's dead before the Sphinx. <laughs> Beowulf, we'll have a club, the Fallen Kings do a musical. Oh, yeah, that sounds like a Neil Gaiman idea. <laughs> <laughs> Foreign Kings Anonymous. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> yeah, great. Um, so, Miguel, that has been, a, yeah, as I said, a wonderful expedition, um, very evocative of uh, these archetypes. Thank you for sharing your childhood story. And how it um yeah connects us all thank you for having me on it was fun yeah i'm looking forward to talk with you again thank you so much take care have a great day you too. Well, it's magic.